Good afternoon on today's Angry Bulletin. While a former UAP researcher with the Pentagon stirs up the news wires with all kinds of amazing stories about a government reverse engineering program regarding crashed UFOs, a current researcher with the Pentagon is searching for an interstellar meteor. A meteor that might not be a meteor after all. Good afternoon and welcome to this special bulletin on the Angry Astronaut. As is often the case, I wasn't actually planning to put something out today, but the current news, the breaking news in regards to UAP research and our search for whatever UFOs or whatever you want to call them might be, well, there have been more recent developments, developments that I think require immediate attention. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome our new Patreon subscribers. As I mentioned in my previous video, I'm trying to get 1% of my subscribers to join as Patreon members and all the benefits that come with that, being part of my Discord community, unique content, early releases, that sort of thing. All of it's in the description, but six new members have joined on, bringing us to a total of 350 supporters. Thank you so much. We are well on our way to reaching that 1% goal. And once again, I appreciate your support. So in 2014, an interstellar meteor, the first one that we have ever detected, at least confirmed detected, crashed in the South Pacific, somewhere off the coast of Papua New Guinea. At first, of course, it could not be confirmed that whatever object struck our planet in 2014 was indeed an interstellar meteor, but as the data was researched more thoroughly, it became very clear that this object could not have come from within our solar system. The trajectory was wrong, and most importantly, the velocity was all wrong. And as the data was studied more thoroughly, it became clear that this object was unlike anything else that had ever struck our planet. In the course of this video, I'm going to be quoting extensively from an article by Avi Loeb, the researcher who's currently off the coast of New Guinea looking for alien wreckage and why he thinks that that's what he's looking for. On January 8, 2014, an object from interstellar space now known as IM-1 hit the Earth at a speed of 45 kilometers per second. The object was detected by U.S. government cameras, and the incident was filed away in a catalog kept by the JPL offices. In 2019, five years later, Avi Loeb, together with his student Amir Siraj, identified this as the first interstellar meteor ever detected. And then U.S. Space Command, under the Department of Defense to NASA, confirmed at a 99.999% confidence level that this was indeed the case, that the first interstellar meteor had been found, because at the time, Oumuamua had not yet been detected. But here's the data that started to make Avi Loeb suspicious. The confirmation letter sent by the U.S. Space Command was accompanied by the light curve of the fireball, which showed three distinct explosions separated by a tenth of a second. The fireball data, which indicated that this small meteor made its way to a much lower altitude than it should have, proved that the object was made out of a material 20 times stronger than that of stony meteorites and two times stronger than iron meteorites, the most resilient meteor that had ever collided with our planet, at least according to the catalog kept by the JPL, which includes 273 meteors. And then, in 2017, the mystery got even stranger. On on March 9th of 2017, the same year that we were studiously examining a Muamua, a second interstellar meteor, a little bit bigger, collided with our planet and impacted off the coast of Portugal. This meteor was also extremely tough, traveling at a speed and trajectory which proved that it was coming from an interstellar destination, and it was the third toughest meteor out of the 273 
fireballs detected. This was too much of a coincidence to go uninvestigated. Not only were the meteors themselves very strange, the fact that we were struck by two fairly similar meteors in the space of only three years suggests that there must be an enormous population of interstellar meteors in the galaxy, far more than the current mass budget for all the stars in the galaxy would suggest to make these collisions seem likely. It's far more likely that these things were sent here by design, and therefore may have been some kind of interstellar probe from another civilization. Or that's what Dr. Loeb wanted to prove, and he raised the necessary money to take an expedition off the coast of New Guinea to look for the first meteor that hit our planet. The idea was to dredge the sea floor looking for fragments of the meteor or perhaps magnetic components of some sort of interstellar probe. And on the first dredging attempt, they found something. Something downright strange. Now, before you start commenting that this is probably one of Dr. Loeb's nose hairs, I'd like you to consider that this is not comprised of any kind of organic molecules. Instead, it is made up of an alloy of manganese and platinum, mostly manganese dioxide, but with some traces of platinum as well. That corresponds to a variety of different types of highly conductive nanowires used in today's lithium batteries and other types of technology. However, the exact composition does not correspond to these types of wires whatsoever. Even though this type of wire would be extremely useful, being highly conductive, the ratio of manganese to platinum does not correspond to anything that we humans manufacture, or at least that seems to be the case right now. The wire is only 8 millimeters long and curved twice with a rigid structure to be expected with this kind kind of composition, but the vast majority of it is comprised of manganese oxide with only trace elements of platinum and aluminum along with some other elements. It is a mystery in the extreme. Now, of course, this is by no means proof that we have found the first wreckage, at least confirmed wreckage, of an alien spacecraft. We could turn up some sort of wire that's manufactured somewhere that's comprised of this sort of material, but it is is not only very unlikely that we should have found something like this in this particular location, it is a stroke of sheer luck that it was dredged up at all because this wire is non-magnetic. The researchers have concluded that the wire was brought up along with a large number of tiny volcanic particles which are magnetic and these particles acted as sort of a magnetic cement that adhered the wire to the magnet. Again, a very lucky occurrence, but something that could very well happen again. So at this very moment, Dr. Loeb's expedition is dredging the bottom of the ocean off the coast of New Guinea, looking for more evidence. And the more materials that they find that do not correspond to human technology, the more this mystery is going to deepen, and the more it is going to appear that for the first time, at least as far as the public is concerned, we have found an alien crash site. And by the way, for those skeptics who think that there's no way that UFOs should be crashing this often, well, first of all, we have no idea how many of them are actually visiting our planet. But secondly, if these are probe ships being launched by a craft that doesn't have exploration as its primary goal, as is the case with Amuamua, and I have a video about this, by the way, linked at the end of this one, well, that would indicate that that these probes and this technology may be several thousand years old by the time it hits our atmosphere. Even alien technology might fail after that much time. And in addition to that, it may be simply a design of the probe craft to take a quick flyby of our planet, gain as much information as it can, and then crash into the atmosphere. That is something we humans have done quite a number of times. I will keep you up to date on this, and in the meantime, stay angry about space!